Hi, I'm Caitlin. And I'm Kathy. And in keeping with the spirit of the season, today we will be sharing some of our favorite ghost stories. Spooky! Kathy, are you a ghost person? Nah, I just don't buy it. Well, I didn't think I was either, but a couple years ago, when she was just learning how to talk, my daughter casually told me that there was a not nice ghost Ooh. in the hallway. Now, I don't really believe in ghosts, but you better believe that to this day, I view that hallway with a healthy dose of skepticism. Now, nice ghosts, sure, but not nice ghosts? No thank you! Mm -mm. Which brings me to Leo by Mac Barnett. Leo is a lonely little ghost living in a big house on the edge of the city. When a family moves in, Leo is thrilled to have some company, but the family is not that into haunted houses. Unloved and unwanted, he sets off on his own into the city. Things seem pretty sad for poor Leo, until one day he meets a little girl who looks at things differently. It turns out that some ghosts can make very good friends. Our hero cast from Kandara Blake's Anna Dressed in Blood certainly doesn't believe that ghosts can make good friends, since he is a ghost hunter tasked with destroying violent, murderous ghouls. Mm. But his latest job, the titular Anna, proves to be more of an asset than a danger when she helps Cass avenge his father's death. Well, that sounds like a whole book full of not nice ghosts. On a ghost hunting related note, this awesome series, Desmond Cole Ghost Patrol by Andres Miedoso, is perfect for kindergarten through second grade supernaturalists. It's about a boy named Andres who, by his own admission, is afraid of everything. This becomes extra problematic when he moves next door to a super cool, super brave kid named Desmond who actually looks for spooky stuff. Side note, if you've ever wondered what happens when a ghost gets indigestion, this is the series for you. Like Andres and Desmond, Colin Dickey is also a ghost hunter. Wait, 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 time out. How can a ghost get indigestion? Haunted lasagna. All right, haunted lasagna, totally makes sense. All right, back to Colin Dickey in his book, Ghostland, An American History in Haunted Places. He explores the legends and true histories of some of America's most infamously haunted locales, only to discover that ghost stories often say more about the tellers than they do about the supernatural. Who knew social history and ghosts go together? Pam Smynu! She wrote the moody and visceral Thornhill. Part diary and part graphic novel, this dual narrative creep fest had me on edge from the beginning. Ella has just moved into a new house. Often on her own, she feels isolated and lonely until she glimpses a girl in the window of the dilapidated, abandoned house next door and decides to unravel the mystery of what happened there. This book, great for fifth grade and up, gave me actual chills. Part mystery, part ghost story, it's even got creepy puppets. Mm -mm. This book is a perfect, gloomy fall day read. If you want foreboding and chills, try another perfect gloomy fall read, the classic Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. Dr. Montague investigates psychic disturbances. He invites three strangers to the frightening Hill House, including our narrator, Eleanor, who has experienced a poltergeist previously. She begins to see and hear things that no one else can. But is it just her imagination? No one, including you, can trust Eleanor, which just adds to the terror. And that's all I got. What, is there something in my teeth? Is, is there something behind me? Nice or not nice? Oh my god, okay, everything's fine. I'm not gonna turn around. Let's just act normal and we're good we're just fine and you can leave your favorite ghost stories yes. <gasps> leave your favorite ghost stories or haunted lasagna recipes in the comments see you next month for another episode of talking books with caitlin and kathy <laughs>